There we go. That's how quick our intros are nowadays. So if you ever want to see those virtual kitchen, you guys are giggling. Uh, <laughs> of, uh, we have a great show lined up today, folks. We're going to talk about what you might do as a restaurateur for 2023. The discussions out there, we hear it all the time. We got statistics coming through nonstop about what 2023 will look like. And I thought, what the heck? Let's get all the best of the best together and have a discussion around this. Some different things that you need to look out for 2023. As I don't know if anyone's got a crystal ball on the call today, but we could sure use one right now and really determine what the hell is. But before we start, um, maybe get you guys just introduce yourself, starting with Rob down there. Okay. Um, thanks, Jay. Uh, my name is Rob Hood. I'm uh, corporate director of food and beverage with Silva Hotel Group. Um, been doing this in Canada for 27 years and was in the U.S. and I'm from the U.K. There you go. And you're a young legend, as we call it. Long, young, very young. Yes. <laughs> so, so, Barry, whereabouts are you? Uh, I'm in North Carolina, Jay. Um, I'm Barry Schuster, and I'm editor of Restaurant Startup and Growth Magazine and a professor in a school of business at North Carolina Central University. Perfect. Do you know what, Barry? I, do you, when I, I teach now at a college, so I can say I'm a professor. You know. I know it's very cool. It's like we have a secret cool. handshake. I know exactly. Are you enjoying it? Got... It's fun. Exactly. So, and also, Joe, I am so excited to have, be able to. I haven't chatted with you for over a year now. I think since yeah, the last time we were on the show. So welcome back, Joe. Joe, where are you? And tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Jay, I'm, uh, now I'm in Central, the Hill Country in Central Texas. And uh, as you know, I'm a partner and vice president of restaurantowner.com. Jim Lab Jim Lab and I run that business, which is an education and training website for independent restaurant tours. And uh, Barry failed to mention he works with us as well. Uh, heads up the Restaurant Startup and Growth Magazine component of that, and uh, is 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 on board as one of the central uh, uh, mind uh, figures for us. So anyway, yeah, had to give you that, Barry. It's, it's a lot. Of so well, I, thank I you for that. that. I read one of your articles the other day, Barry, and I was like, wow, you do good stuff. It's really good out there. So let's get into that. So there's your plug, buddy. Uh, so let's get into this and talk a little bit about this discussion today. I'm going to run not as many commercials. I may plug them in later for the On Demand channel, but I just want to get into it because uh, just to have you all three of you on the call today is an honor um, because you, you, you chat with people all the time. You're out there in the market. Rob, you're living it every day out there. Um, with your with your group, um, so I want to talk briefly, and I always I always want to be able to tell someone to take something away from today's talk to be able to take away. So we always say there's two things that we we're going to look at that today. Hopefully, there's two things you can take back, look at, and consider for 2023. Um, you know, we tell people all the time do their you know do these things over and over again. Hopefully, sometimes they stick. Like Joe, you've been telling people to take care of their food costs or labor cost, all those things for over 20 some years, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. And, and it, it's not just it's not just taking care of those things. You know, it's 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 um, uh, always thinking about your business and what you're going to do next to make that business better. I mean, always have to be thinking about that. You wrote the book on it, I think. You guys wrote this. We started. How long has RestaurantOwner.com been around? Well, Jim Jim founded it in 1998, and he and I joined up in 2004. Our careers go back even further than that, but uh, that's when we started. Uh, um, doing restaurantowner.com as it is right now, how we portrayed it. So, wow. Yeah. Rob was a young fella. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, uh, there's uh, people ask us, we talked about this before the pre head of the show, but um, one of the things we like to tell in restaurantowner.com is that, um, you know, there, people are asking, what does it take to be a successful restaurateur? And to us, it's answering two questions. Why do my customers come to my restaurant? And why do my employees want to work here? If you can answer those two questions very well, you're on a much better footing for dealing with whatever good or bad is going to come in 2023. Yeah, well, I I got a couple things here, and I was listening to you guys talk earlier before the show, 
And I, I want to get into some stuff here and get through my list. Trying to, trying to stay on track. I drift too much. Um, but you're absolutely right. And I want to talk about because you guys have so many, so much valuable insight. So I want everyone to you know, take their time listening to this podcast, watch this podcast on Spotify or on YouTube or on Facebook or on LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitch. You can actually just Google us now and watch your shows off of Google. So whatever you want. So I want to start off the conversation today with, with you guys on new ways to increase and encourage foot traffic for operators for 2023. What are some of the things that you're hearing out there that people are, are focusing on right now to increase foot traffic? We know the, the stats are here. I got them all down. Their, their foot traffic is supposed to you know decrease a little. Delivery seems to be sticking. But what are some of those things to get operators, especially come January, February, to do or consider or think about or Google to increase foot traffic? Who wants to start? Barry? Well, you know, I mean, I'm going to go back to basics and I believe, you know, we're so focused on the independent operators. So you have to understand that's kind of our, our bias. But, you know, as Johnny Caraba said, um, you know, every restaurant concept, whether it's a thousand units or a single unit, um, lives and dies uh, at the unit level, at the meal to meal level. Um, you know, I, I think dependence, it's, it's a great guest experience. I, you know, I, I'm all for technology. I understand the role of social media. There are people who are using all kinds of platforms amazingly, and those are important. But that word of mouth marketing um, is is really um, is something you really have to try to develop because that's what's going to get people, particularly independent operators working in the local community, for people to not only want to come back, but bring their friends along. And I'll leave it to uh, our other experts here, but I, I really need to throw that one out there because I just think we need to talk about that. So, so just want to touch on that really quick because I think you guys have ingrained that in my brain. I actually re- use that all the time in my lectures is the word of mouth marketing. Do you have an example, Barry, that you can share with us just what operators could be thinking about word of mouth? Because I think a lot of them are going to navigate to social media to do that. Is there other ways that people do that? Um, you know, I think giving people an opportunity to um, uh, to encourage them to talk about their experiences online, uh, when people start talking about the uh, the experience they had of, of the social media platform, to jump in there and to thank them for doing that. Uh, it, it rewards them. It honors their opinion of the experience. And then it uh, often will encourage others to feel, you know, uh, hey, I'd like to talk about my experience as well. Hopefully it's a good experience. I mean, you know, social media and word of mouth can backfire too, as you understand. But to jump in there in the conversation with them, uh, the best operators uh, are are keeping an eye on what people are saying about them out there, uh, not only user review sites, but, you know, on Facebook and, and, uh, and Twitter and, uh, you know, trying to keep that conversation going. Um, engagement's important, whether you're at the uh, table side or social media. Awesome. Rob, what do you think? Uh, well, for enlarging is a little bit different because we, we, we not only want to um, – um, uh, we want to appeal for in-house guests as well as as well as street side food uh, foot traffic, but it, you know it's it's about a balance of a couple of things. I I totally agree with with Barry's earlier statement in terms of we want to create innovative, personal, unique service experiences, and you you build that reputation one cover at a time. And and it's 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 tough to do, but you got to make sure that every service experience is is absolutely perfect. And and the second part, more importantly for for lodging, is to create really innovative, unique um, service environments as well. Uh, dining's a little lot more casual than than it's ever been. It's definitely more casual than we were. Um, pre-pandemic, but you know, really allowing guests to feel comfortable in a in a in a unique um, uh, service environment, um, training associates to be 
engage with guests at, at a whole different level, uh, not over familiar, but just in terms of knowledge in, in of, of the product they're se selling and also so being kind of going from being servers and providing service to actually being hosts uh, and empresarios uh, in, in a food environment. So you, you marry that, uh, that need for theater, uh, unique service experience and, and just a great menu offering um to uh, to attract guests so do you think some of those traditions in the past that are going to come back that we saw maybe disappear over the last 10 20 years i i think the need for this kind of empresario production of of being that that's that's where our business was you know a long long time ago we kind of lost it and got trapped in this you know conveyor of functionality uh, and and uh, yeah, functionality and, and standardization that kind of killed the spirit, and and now I guess are looking for that unique experience. They don't want what their neighbors had, and they don't want the same experience that the guest had an hour ahead of them. They they want their time. And and again, back you know back in what Barry was saying, then that goes to social media, which then attracts even even more people. Exactly. You know, I was on. I did a presentation the other two weeks ago in Vancouver at a golf uh, association event, and I mentioned the old. You know, I, we were talking about, you know, the the days of when chefs used to come out of the kitchens and and talk with the tables, and ask how their meals were going, and they all were like, "It'd be like amazing to do that again." Back in the day, Joe, do you see anything of those traditions coming back that you've seen happening, or do you see things that people should consider? Well, you know, it's just, it's the way things are delivered these days that's different because the, what appeals to customers and restaurants, it, it's, it's been the same for years. It's just things have changed. The menus have changed. The technology's changed. Uh, but speaking to the, the word of mouth and those, those type of fundamentals that get people back in the door, we can never forget how much that really means to building your customer base and to getting new customers in the door. And, but now we need to also embrace some of the technology that's out there because a lot of our word of the mouth is generated through social media, not just through the four walls and our direct contact with people, but also social media. Companies like Ovation that gives you a platform for um, uh, guess, getting guest feedback, uh, being able to use the social media channels and, and having a website that, that uh, allows for a free exchange of information and being able to reply to people if they complain and to you know, reply to people when they when they praise you, um, you know, but it never replaces the thing, you know, the things that get on social media are the things that happen in the four walls, right? Or that happens on the delivery, you know, when you get the delivery to make sure that everything's packaged properly and, 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 and it's a great experience on the delivery. It's the same thing in the four walls is that what happens there, you know, it's the staff that's going to be able to make the difference. So we've got to encourage our staff and give them license to be able to do something that's going to be hospitality minded. Um, just real quick, for instance, we were at a, um, a legendary steakhouse. Perini's are in, uh, they're in, they're in Buffalo Gap, Texas here. Okay. And uh, we had our grandson with us and uh, our grand, our, our, our daughter-in-law forgot to bring his pacifier. Well, one of the staff members on their own went down to the store, got a pacifier, bought two of them actually brought it back and gave it to them. No one prompted them. That wasn't in their script or whatever, but she had the license to be able to do something like that. And I think we got to empower our staff to be creative. And, and the way to do that is through staff meetings and everything else, encourage them. Hey, what kind of ideas can you have? What kind of story can we share? You know, uh, but that's how you generate good word of mouth. And it doesn't matter if it was a fine dining steakhouse or a, 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 a subway line. You know, <laughs> there's things you can do that make points of difference. Right. Yeah. And I think that's going to come back to, a little bit on the innovation side. I, I don't know if that's the right word to put in there on the whole experience of doing those things. Cause I remember those days when we encouraged our staff to run down to the store to get, you know, gum or get something for this, for the, one of their guests at the table sure. today, that stuff would go viral to your yeah. point on social. Bingo. Exactly. In fact, it's a better opportunity for word of mouth. Of course, that's a two way street, right? <laughs> but uh, it's a better opportunity for that social social media word of mouth when there's something to really talk about that's, that's good. You know. Cool. Well, this leads me into the next part I want to talk to you guys about is innovation. So so not only on the tech side that we're seeing this, 
But from an operator's position, so from I'm owning a restaurant here in, let's say, Edmonton, and I keep hearing innovation from companies all out there. Big companies are saying you got to be innovative. Are you guys seeing that? Or what would you say as an operator that they should consider when they hear them saying you have to be innovative in 2023? I what year it was. 2023. Who wants to jump on that first? I'll, I'll, I'll be glad oh. to jump on that real quick. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Um, well, and, and Barry, I'm going to let you talk about Sean uh, there because you, you've you had in-depth talk uh, mm-hmm. uh, conversations with him. But we are, you know, we're, we're moving towards this this terminology y'all have heard about now called a tech stack, right? So everybody's mm-hmm. talking tech stack in the restaurant. Now, what kind of innovation, what kind of technology can we use to improve our restaurants? And, you know, there's the things that the pandemic brought out are really just, um, they were just jump starting something that was happening already, you know, um, online order entries, contactless payments, um, e- easier to make reservations, easier to get on your on your waiting list, um, uh, call ahead seating, you know, all of those things, every one of those things are really driven by technology. You really can't handle it with, you know, a red book and a phone anymore. It has to go through technology. Uh, same thing with order production, um, you know, the video order systems, um, uh, you know, anything, uh, the robotics, which I'm not as familiar with about robotics, but I'll tell you what, any opportunity we can have, uh, I'd rather see something like that coming in new innovation rather than we talk about the typical cost cutting, you know, if you will. Uh, and yeah, I never like the word cost cutting. I like the word waste cutting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very better. You know, it's just so, so Joe, do you think then most operators, so if you say you're going to 2023, you're going to need to have an operator tech stack. Because I have heard tech stack numerous times. There's a restaurant in their business plan, but your tech stack is going to be normal. I think important. it's very important that I've been in this business for, without aging myself, well over 40 years. And it's daunting to me. And I've actually sold technology before in, in my career and that. But um, it's daunting because there's so much out there and trying to discern what is right for your restaurant. You can't just use everything, right? But um, that's your competition is going to be doing it. And you've got the comp, you've got these this struggle of labor. Um, today's hires, they don't want to do spreadsheets. They don't want to do uh, manual things. If they know of, of, of apps and stuff that's on their phone, it's on their side, you know, on their on their hip pocket all the time. Uh, they want to be able to use technology. So building technology is also something that's building your staff engagement. The giving them, you know, one of the big engagement tools. Give them tools and resources to work with. They want it. It's it's kind of a natural flow for them, you know. Rob, you want to get on this one? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I again, I, I don't think we're we're taking technology as seriously as we should do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's here. Uh, it's time to embrace it. It's time to rethink uh what what our viewpoint is i um you touched on the robotics piece i i've done a couple of demos uh with some different robotic um uh, companies and on a a side and personal note i've been waiting for robots to hit the restaurant business since watching star wars in 1977 so i i am really glad it's here and and this is just the start of of this science, uh, you, you know, the companies have looked at uh, that, that have these robots. It, it's it's quite astounding, and what it does, building back into what we were just saying about, you know, unique guest service experiences, driving, you know, foot traffic. Th- these robots actually drive an interest from customers. Yeah. It's a different service innovation. Um, you, you know, we we tend to look at anything where we're investing in, in in restaurants as it needs to be functional, has to be efficient, has to be cost effective. Well, we we also need to provide a service experience that's going to be unique to our guests, something they're going to want to come back and experience again. R- robots right now uh, are starting to do that. People are intrigued yeah. by having a non-human, not server, but a non-human food carrying device in their environment. And this is this is very new and exciting. And and for some uh, hotels in Canada that have actually put robots onto well, the payroll who bring towels and room service and 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 other room deliveries to rooms very fast and very efficiently. 
it becomes a gimmick. People then want to have their picture taken with the robot that then finds its way onto social media, which is great PR press, and then more people want to come and experience it. So I, I think th this is uh, this kind of uh, technology needs to be looked at more than just a functional business efficiency tool, but also for something to provide guests with some joy and some special interest into an environment that it would have just been, you know, so so. So I think there's a there's a huge horizon on the, in the future for this. Barry, what do you see? Yeah, you know, I'll get back to the robots in a minute, although I, about five or six years ago, I was, I was introduced to robots and hotels by a company uh, that was uh, promoting them. And it was very intriguing for a lot of reasons. And they were using primarily for food, for, uh, uh, for room service, uh, which is nice because you didn't have to tip the robot and you didn't have to put your pants on when they're playing with your food. And, and, and <laughs> that was good. But um, in terms of the technology, um, you know, I think, uh, like I said, you're going to have to keep up with it. With it, everybody's using it. Um, I'll point out kitchen management systems, particularly those companies that want to have um, uh, ghost kitchen and delivery, third-party delivery type businesses, or even bring those under their roof. Um, you're going to need something that uh, uh, tracks orders, uh, reduces the opportunity for mistakes, improves communication with uh, the customer and the kitchen or the front of the house in the kitchen. And it provides analytics for menu engineering, what's selling, what isn't, what's taking long, where are the hiccups, what's taking longer times, what, you know, where are the problem areas. So data analytics, I believe, is just going to become a, a bigger and bigger part of the industry. In terms of any technology, including robotics, and, and this is not my original, these are not my original thoughts. Uh, I've heard this from a number of thought leaders in the industry. And I, I, I don't want to talk about anybody in particular because I don't want to leave anybody out. But the role of technology, in my mind, in hospitality, is to do things that are purely transactional, to do things where the human touch isn't needed so that you can free the people in your business to provide that human touch. So for example, I'll use McDonald's just as a, an easy example. They have these big kiosks, you go in and you try to, you know, and, and the first time I ever used one, I was kind of lost. But the, the point is, instead of having, uh, having just as one person in a truly transactional relationship with the customer, let that person be out there helping me figure out how to order off this kiosk, answer questions. If I need some extra help, they'll give it to me. And let technology, in terms of the guest experience, free up people to do what hospitality is supposed to do, kindness to strangers, and let technology do the things that are not really required for uh, the human touch, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, I think it does. You know, I, I saw it at McDonald's actually, they took their, they actually had a hostess, a host. And it might have been a customer experience person. I don't know if they use that terminology, but instead of having someone behind the till taking an order that can be done through a system, they took that person, put them out in front of the dining room and was welcoming you into McDonald's and asked if you had any questions. And then I saw that person went to a table because someone asked about the coffee. They went and grabbed a one pound McCafe coffee beans bag and went to the table. Like this is McDonald's and went to the table like, well done McDonald's and shared the coffee story with those two guests. So they just diverted something that is very manual based. It doesn't really provide an experience in today's world for fast food and took that body and said, you know what, let's go out there and enhance the experience in the dining room. And that person is doing what, what hospitality is all about rather than just being a purely transactional uh, yeah, yeah. role. So, yeah, absolutely. So that, that's that's a more philosophical point, but um, uh, in terms of that guest experience, robotics and all that. But you don't want – the thing that I would caution against is is to feel you can replace the human touch with robotics or technology. My argument is – use technology and robotics to allow human beings to do what human beings do best of all. Yeah. Right. Smile. Yeah. Smile. <laughs> smile. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Well, they do smile too now, Joe. That's right. Um, <laughs> they sing happy birthday to you. Um, so the other thing, I, so I want to talk about this next thing here right away, because I think that's really good. But so far, I definitely want to make sure that we include in two things that people can take away today is that you're going to have to have a tech stack strategy, I think, in your restaurant moving forward. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's, I don't know if we can patent in that today either, Rob, Canada, but yeah. you know, I've heard everything from, you got to have your, your costing tools, your PL tools, your labor training staff. Now you're going to need your tech stack. I don't know if you guys have ever Googled star hospitality. This is not a plug for them because I'm not a partner, but I do know what they do is they actually take people out and they'll review your, your tech strategy in your restaurant for free. Tell you what you need to do to improve it. And they like, like it your business by using t uh, technology. So uh, Star Hospitality, if people want to Google that. Um, so next subject here, one of, the, one of the other ones here, I want to do this as we finish up today. Um, so that is a big one. I, I just want to make sure we take away people. You need to have your tech stack strategy in place for your restaurant. Who thought, eh? Uh, that was going to be that important. So as we move from tech, I want to talk a little bit about loyalty programs. So I got stats galore here from Technomics. You know, they're a great partner of ours. And we got galore of statistics here. Um, so right here, 41% of Gen, Gen, Gen Zers prefer, prefer to visit restaurants that offer loyalty programs. Is this something that people need to be aware of in 2023? Should they be looking at loyalty programs for their restaurants or hotels as they move forward? Who wants to jump on this one, Rob? Um, for lodging, because, you know, for, for branded um, properties, you know, Marriott, Hilton, IHG, Hyatt, and whoever else, those programs exist within the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's been nice to see is that they have um, – uh, the, the the focus on food and beverage for uh, redemption or earning points for for those uh, th those brands has definitely been more of a focus, which is great. It gets people into outlets. It gets people to dine in house where they where they may not have have done that before. So you know that's been very very positive. It's not designated to food and beverage specifically in any general case but you know you'll have your marriott bonvoy points and and you know those are those are big collectible items i i think for you know the commercial sector it, it is because they kind of become more important you know there's this this certain thrill in collecting the points and um and the rewards that may not necessarily be just discounts and may not just be you know the good old free dessert it may be something uh something that the individual user can um target towards so i think i think there's there's definitely a lot of um a lot of ground uh, a lot of things to be considered plus people can get them directly onto their phone so these these points follow them wherever they go you don't need to send them send away for them anymore the old days of the mail you got it once a uh -huh. month once every couple of months and you looked at it okay whatever now you can apply it right away yeah right so barry what do you think about loyalty programs yeah i think i think uh, particularly for those in the fast fast casual fast casual segment and the casual segment um Um, but, uh, you know, clearly for a very upscale fine dining restaurant, that probably isn't part of their concept. Um, however, uh, yeah, I mean, for a place like a boba tea place or, uh, you know, uh, gourmet pizzas, things like that, where people are going to visit maybe, you know, once or twice or three times a month, um, that could be the difference between winning that business over from, um, uh, that young person to, uh, uh, to another concept where in a competitive market. Um, so that's where I kind of see the importance of loyalty. What do you think, Joe? Thanks, uh, well, you know, we know that loyalty apps have been around for years and years, but see now they're probably more important than ever in many, uh, many establishments. And we've even, we, we have seen some in fine dining. It's really a matter of how they're used because this is our, you know, think about a loyalty app. What it, you're, you're getting the customer to come back. But the main thing we got to remember is that one of the key marketing tools is to build your customer list, is to build your marketing list. And they are your marketing list. So if you get them on the loyalty app, um, you are now building a marketing list. And it's an opportunity now that you can communicate with them, whether that's through the app, through notifications, through social media, through email, through whatever uh, uh, platform uh, or, or that they've had to be able that you can communicate with them. 
but we got to let them know what's going on in the restaurant. So if we're going to make improvements to the guest experience, we're going to do something that's new. We're going to add, or we want to share stories um, with our customer base that would make them interested and say, wow, that that's a, you know, that's cool. I want to go back there and revisit it. Uh, this is an opportunity to market to those people. And so I think what needs to be done is people need to talk about um, really plan what they want to say when they, you know, not just put stuff out there and bother them, you know, with their junk email and so on, but mm -hmm. have something really significant when you're going back to the, you know, we got to consider, you know, we're in this, that's what we're in a business. We're a membership subscription business. How often do we have to communicate with our members? When's too much? When's not enough? What are we saying? What really piques their interest? Uh, that has to be something when you deal with the marketing list. And that's what a loyalty app to me is, is that really gets that marketing list an opportunity to get directly in contact with that customer. But you got to have something good to say and you got to know the frequency of how often you're going to do it. It really it really looks like the age is around that 18 to 34 is what they're showing here on the stats. Mm -hmm. They really loves loyalty programs. This is because like our generation's not aging ourselves. But our generations may have been tarnished by some old loyalty programs in the past that just were kind of those, you know, they were really, there was very less value or little value within it. Well, I'm going to age myself. I've got, I, my favorite loyalty card is with a local restaurant in the Houston, and now they've expanded throughout Texas, called Loopy Tortillas. That's the name of their restaurant. And I've got the original card that's all beat up on the corners. I wish I had it in my back pocket. I'd show it to you. 1983. Okay. So that was the establishment. And we've got, and I've got a card that I keep to this day and I take it back. And I'm, I, I have a story with the waiter or waitress every time I give it to them, but there's a certain pride that goes into that. So, you know, that, that loyalty app. And even though I hope none of them are listening to, I've had some very bad service over the years and certain times and very good service. In other words, I get a mix of everything, but that, that, that thing that keeps uh, having me come back, I guess is because uh, I feel like I'm a member, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Well, we saw that Starbucks's app is killing it right now. McDonald's app is increasing their sales. All these different things that are going out there in those loyalty programs. I think these bigger companies are starting to rewrite them in a way that is going to cause those interactions and customers to feel special and, like the, I don't know if you guys have tested the McDonald's app. It's incredible. Uh, the value and what it's doing is incredible to that operation. It's, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. I, I'd recommend people checking it out. But I definitely think on the loyalty program, from my perspective, it is something to consider to drive that experience because the younger operators, a lot of the stuff is new to a lot of these people dining out nowadays that don't know what a, you know, a loyalty program is like or at a ca casual or fast casual restaurant. They could create some new experiences yeah. for them. So I'm going to share something with you guys because I got uh, some other companies I work with. Guess where loyalty is coming into play? And it is going to change loyalty programs to become, I think, more focused as a, uh, a part of business models. Do you guys know where this new loyalty program is coming in? I don't know if I'll give you guys a hint. but You're going to have yeah. you. I'm going to have to tell you, but so loyalty programs are coming into the video based home, like Netflix and Disney. It's playing to that model now. So they're working on that. So when you start watching a movie, you get credit every time you get a movie to go buy stuff mm. in their loyalty program. So you want to see engagement. Makes perfect sense. Totally does. Because, like, to Joe's point, you get their information, you know what they're. Well, you can start navigating those people to love your video-based content more and more as you navigate what they maybe like. Like, I like boats and sea doos or I like skidoos. Those kind of things. It's, you don't know, you know what those are, Joe, down there. But mm -hmm. those kind of things down in Texas. But um, you can start navigating. So you think about how that's going to bring loyalty programs to more of the forefront of all business is when those big companies like the Netflix, the Disney – start incorporating loyalty programs into just you watching videos. That will change the whole game. You know, but what you said there, they're gathering the customer information, right? They, they, yeah. they now have a, a, a marketing list, which is used for multiple purposes. And, you know, uh, uh, that is probably the most important thing to remember is that you now have a, the people that are regulars at your restaurant. And if we're talking about answering that, that big question, 
what are the why do people come to my restaurant if i don't know that answer guess who does it's those people right there and they you know those people are great for engagement surveys they're great i mean it's just it's just a a, a great thing to do it, 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 it it's not just about getting them to come back for a 10 percent discount it's mm -hmm. there's a lot more to it than that because it builds word of mouth as well right. it does it absolutely does right like just if they get something that they see value in mm -hmm. within your program right so i just want to share that with you guys i got some intel so mr zuckerberg's working on that uh, <laughs> so, oh i just want to share that with you um so as we wrap up here guys i'm going to give something for the operators and first of all thank you all of you like i'm just i could just sit here all day and talk about this we could go for hours talking about our industry because you guys are so passionate and you really have helped shape i think a lot of our industries we see it today um, so I'm going to say these things and we'll just go through some recaps here. So engaging the staff, creating that customer experience is so important. So you need to go look at that for 2023. That isn't going away. That's going to be one of the top things you're going to have to work on. Now, see, I started doing mystery shoppers back in the day for restaurants. Do you think those are going to come back more and more? Joe, Barry, you guys wrote the book on it. You know, um, I don't know. I haven't seen that out there very, very, very much. Has social media taken the place of it? <laughs> well, know? Look, it you know, I, I haven't, you know, I haven't really seen, you know, it, there was a lot of talk about it in 2004, 2005, remember, and I, I just don't hear about it anymore. Um, Rob, you does know, your, does your, Rob, have you have uh, like people that do that within the hospital, yeah. the hotel industry? Yeah, do we do it. We, we, I mean, the brands, you know, they have GSS, ESA. I mean, it, the, they all basically do the same thing, which is more of a brand standards order. But as a company, we've, we've used mystery shoppers before. And, and what I like about them is that they will give you a very independent viewpoint in terms of what their service experience has, has yeah. been like. Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing with, you know, the, Merritt, Hyatt, Hilton, and whoever else, they're just wanting to see how compliant you are to a standard that's going to standardize you. The mystery shopper, the, the value that that brought is, is actually showing you what the guest experience is, which yeah. may not always agree with what the brand wants you to do. And I hope no one from any brands is listening today. But 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 that's great intel because at, at the end of the day, we, we just want to provide food and service that people want to buy. I'm not interested in in creating something or trying to sell something that is just because it's compliant then it makes sense to to a smaller group of people we want to understand are we really hitting where we need to be are we producing that service level that our people want to see and and you know are we ultimately providing the the menus and, and food that people are willing to pay for you know if i can add that to that jay um you know it's not that there's not a need for the mystery shopper or there's not a great use for it. I just haven't heard a bunch of buzz about it lately. But when oh. we think, when you think about it, the most important part of that is when you're talking about the guest experience is you have to know the guest journey. I mean, there's basic touch points that go through every single guest experience from when they first hear you from when they leave you. And those touch points are something that mystery shoppers can do very well um, to see how you hit each of those touch points in a, during a service cycle. I agree. I think it's I think it's that customer journey or guest journey. Um, I've seen that a lot with an, you know, airlines. They do a lot of the customer journey through an airline. So, you know, as soon as you get to the airport, by the time you get onto the plane, uh, and in the plane, right, and and all that that journey that you have, literally on journey. But I think it, I think mystery shoppers. Maybe we rebranded where it's more of about like a, an experience shopper report mm -hmm. for people to really look at that. Because I know that when you guys did mystery shoppers with restaurant owner back in the day, I remember Jim had a video or something on it. Like there was such a big hype about it. I know in Canada, we're always a little bit behind what you guys do down in the States in our space. But I remember coming out when people were all over it. But today I think it's more important that we look at the experience through the lens of someone else that can do that for you. So I think based on the experience and all the different things out there, because I don't think people have the opportunity and luxury to make any mistakes anymore in our industry yep. too. Often. Right. Right. I don't think it's like, Oh, it's okay. I got another person coming. I don't think it's like that anymore. 
Um, so, so we gotta, we're gonna have to bring that back. Barry, you're gonna have to do an article on that. Okay. New mystery, I need something new, for February anyway. So, <laughs> new, mystery 20, new mystery shopper of 2023. There you go. Um, you got it, Jay. You asked for it. You got it. <laughs> All right, okay. Thank you. And then I think the other thing I just want to leave with this in this, I just thank you again for bringing up the important part around technology. But I've heard it within other companies and other things I work on is what's your tech stack? It becomes a part of the language. And I think in our industry, that's going to be fairly new, I think, to 2023 is what's your tech stack within your restaurant and what you're doing with your business in that space. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to have a full blown plan because back in the, I think, you know, you think about like 10, 15 years ago is what was your social media strategy? And then you started having to make sure you had your social media people on board and how often were they going to post and all these different things. Now it's probably going to pull that into the tech stack, your tech stack and your social media. It's a whole different ball game in our industry when you start playing in that space. Because that is, I think, a space that, you know, how operators are always cautious of what they kind of lean into based on, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not tech savvy people that run restaurants usually. They're not social media savvy people. There's good people that work hard and provide a grace. They love entertaining or providing guest experience, and they love our industry of love food and everything else. They typically are not in the tech space. So this is going to be a great opportunity for people to really learn more about tech in their business, restaurants, to look at companies like Star Hospitality that can come in and do a full assessment of your operation, what you need to have. Because as you all know, there's a million tech companies out there in our industry already. Mm -hmm. and I yeah, that's just going to multiply. I think it multiplying like crazy over there. You're going to have to do your homework in that space. So I think you look at having a tech stack, but do your homework majorly on that. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things out there you don't need, too complicated. Right. Gonna use it, right. I think simplicity is going to have to be key in that space because it also comes with a big ticket, big price usually too. So, well, And your staff, sorry. think about it. The tech stack, the tech stack is, is, you're trying to improve the customer journey and you're also trying to improve the, the, the employee journey and yeah. the, you know, the, the, the clientele that you're dealing with that those age groups or what they're used to, you know, um, you can't take a waitress that was or a server that was making, uh, you know, $400 working at Morton steakhouse on a shift and coming there and you're doing your order on a, on a pad and paper. Okay. It just doesn't work that way. Right. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to, that goes back to that mystery shopper on your tech too. Yeah. Right, that's experience. What do they think about that when you go to the table? You know, I'm getting the new stats came across on QR codes. They ain't liking uh, QR codes. No one likes them. Uh, I would be very cautious at them. Yeah, they may work for some QSRs, but the statistics are showing that people like the menu, the old menu style. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Printers will like that. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of things out there. I think at the base of it uh, is that you got to do your homework. Don't tackle too much in 2023. Get your tech, work on your experience, and uh, considering really your customer journey, I think, as you move through at your restaurant. And sit back and, re and really analyze this stuff. As you all know in our industry, people get into it, and you know, six months later, it's like, oh, we should have looked at this, or we should have done that, or we should have looked at our customer experience journeys. Um, I would say take January and February. We used to do this in our restaurants. Is take those months to work on the other 10 that are going to be crazy busy for you. Mm -hmm. So, last final yeah. word. Yeah. Let's go from there. That's right, Barry. Well, um, uh, amen to everything you said, Jay. And just uh, the best and the brightest are focus on incremental improvement. It's not like looking back. Oh, we should have done it last month. Every day, you got to get up and say, "What systems can we improve? What can we do to improve our training? What is working for a menu? And what isn't?" It's it's really just a series of continual incremental improvements that get you where you want to go. Um, uh, so I, I would leave with that statement. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Barry. Joe? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it boils down to if you're going to review what you're going to be getting into 2023, it's a matter of knowing what you're going to start doing and what you're going to quit doing. And it kind of, you know, are we, you know, are we going to start doing something new with, with our technology, with our menu? Are we going to quit doing something new with the menu or, or that, 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 that isn't helping that guest journey? So um, that's the big thing to me. I mean, what am I going to start doing? What am I going to quit doing? <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, that's, the, there's another topic we get on too, but you're absolutely right. 
is you got to look at it. You got to analyze everything mm -hmm. gotta and everything, right? So Rob, last famous words of this. <laughs> that's a lot. Wow. That's a lot of pressure. Um, I, I, I think it, it's going to be a case of do not be afraid to reinvent everything and anything mm. um, in your surroundings. Um, we're in a different age now. We're not going back to the way we were. We need to look at every facet of the guest experience. Uh, be different. Don't be like everybody else. Create something that's personal and unique and is going to bring joy both emotionally and, and value into, into the heart and mind of every guest that comes through your door. Um, and they will come back again. But it's a case of reinventing and reevaluating every part of your business. And, and as uh, Joe had said, that, that guest journey. Mm. There you go. I, you know how my, my, our president, our new president here at Cisco Canada, he said this, and it's one of the greatest lines, I think, of 2022 is that you have to, and it, it is not his line, I don't know if he's noticed it was in Forbes before him, but you have to learn, unlearn, and then relearn. Mm. And I do that every day within what we're doing over here on our network and what we're doing in the industry here to provide content out there, is I think you have to do that, learn and then unlearn and then relearn all the time. There's so much avenues out there like podcasts and different things out there, content beyond you can imagine to help you learn and then unlearn and relearn everything again so yeah great stuff there so i just want to thank all of you for today's show being on our svk network podcast it is a complete honor i'm always nervous when i have guys like you on here that are like rewrote the industry and you know, oh. there you go right, thank you all thanks jay thank hey, you, we, jay. We it's jay. Thank you. awesome and for everyone else we're back again tomorrow we have a little battle going on with Peter, Chef Peter and Beyond Meats, chef out of California. We'll head to head. It's always a blast. We watch plant-based against Peter in Winnipeg. It should be a good one. And then we're back on Wednesday with marketing. Thursday, we're back. And then Friday, we're back again. Monday to Friday, we're daily every day at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So thanks again to all of you and to everyone else out there. Have a great rest of your day. Get out there and support our industry. And uh, we'll talk soon. And Barry, write that article. All right. I'm doing it. All right, see you guys. Thanks, guys.